Welcome to part two of this three-part series. Without delay, let's pick it up where part one left off. <laughs> Looks like Lisa Simpson on some major meds. Hey, don't abuse. Here's something else that boggles the mind. Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department spokesman, I won't give the name, said that while deputies do occasionally patrol in the area, the department is also not responsible for the site. All right, we're gonna follow this sidewalk. We're gonna go straight across and go around that bend. We're coming around to what they call the warehouse building. What I find fascinating is some videos I've seen on YouTube. This car that's been sitting there probably hasn't been there more than three years. The reason why I say that is I've seen some YouTubes up and the car isn't there. Now, I don't know if the YouTubes were only posted three years ago or recorded longer than that, but the car wasn't in any of them. If you look up above, you see that beam. I believe that was used to pull the very heavy items that they would get out of the trucks. And the beam curved so they can lower the heavy items into that area. The launch area held three underground missile magazines, each serving a group of four missiles for a total of 12 missiles. Here's a fun piece of information. Oh, oh yeah. A movie called The Big Picture, filmed at DeSoto Church, released April 6, 1959, talks about the site. Okay, we're going back the way we came, and as we go up this sidewalk, we're going to turn left. When we turn left, we're actually going east. We're going to be heading towards what they called the Ready Building. There it is. This isn't my first time at the LA-88, and in the past when I've been up here, I thought these bullet holes were done by the military, but I was told that LAPD comes out here. I have a tough time believing that LAPD has the ammunition and guns that shoot holes this big. This launch area contained mess and rec hall, missile fueling station, assembly and test building, Ready Building, Gen Building, Operator Shelter, Athletic Court, Paint Storage, Warehouse and Ready Building, Intelligence Fusion Center, Underground Water Tank, and three Underground Missile Storage. LA-88 was known for being the first in the LA area to have the Hercules nuclear warhead missile for use alongside the earlier Ajax missile. Going down this hallway to the left is a restroom. For those curious, the toilet was in the back left and the sink was on the right near the middle. As we leave that tiny room, this room here on the left is a locker and shower room. And what I find interesting about this, this seems to be the only shower in this whole complex. There are showers in the administration area about a mile from here, outside this area. I find it hard to believe these guys had one shower to share among them. Remember, there were about 120 men. There's the hole for the shower head and coming up there are the two holes for the hot and cold water. With this being the only shower in the place, you wanna share a shower? Excuse me? LA-88 was the first in Los Angeles area to employ K-9 sentry guard dogs to patrol. Decommissioned in 1972, there isn't much remaining of the base following a catastrophic wildfire in 2008. Yeah, I forgot about that. I guess that's how the buses got burnt up. Except it doesn't explain why none of the buildings are blackened. Yeah. 
we're still heading east and looking at this building we're looking south now they call this the gen building g-e-n based off of the floor plan it looks like there was some computer equipment stationed in there and we'll check that out in a second get a glimpse of the floor you can see those humps those are where the computers sat and yes believe it or not they had computers in the 50s they just didn't sit on your lap the first computers were built in 1943 that right there is a beehive but I figure if I leave them alone they'll leave me alone there are three parts to the LA-88 it doesn't really specify but part one is about six acres that's probably the administration area we haven't seen yet part two and three around 40 acres and I'm pretty sure that's this launch and control area okay this little building is what they call the operators shelter I don't understand why it's a shelter but that's what they call it and speaking of acreage for anyone who's interested, the total acres is 107.69 acres. Coming up, you can see in this lower left corner that piping or conduit was probably for the phone lines. If you're wondering if any missiles were ever fired, the answer is no. No missiles were ever fired. Okay, we're still heading east and coming up on the launch pad, but this little gem of a building is the Sentry Control Station. Now we're coming up to the main event, the launch pad. Now we're heading east-north, and these missiles here are facing north, except for those two little guys, they're facing east. Now these doors would fly open and the launch holder would bring the missile up and extend out. The next item you're going to see are the holes left for the swamp coolers which are pretty much all over the place. Oh, so PETA is giving? I wonder what it is she's giving. And when she's giving it, I wonder if it's good. The reason for the swamp coolers is because underneath the entire launch pad are some cubicles, some areas where the missiles are going to be when they're down underneath. And there's also a couple living sleeping spaces. So some of the men were down there. I believe they called them pit rats. Hey, there's the parking lot where I started. That's my car on the hump to the right, the little black dot. Cool. Everywhere you see concrete, there's a floor underneath, a whole living space. Some of these men's virtually slept right next to these missiles. Talk about an alarm clock. These are for the smaller missiles that you saw in that earlier picture. These doors would fly open and these missiles come straight up and then tilt in the direction they're going to want to fire it at. Usually to the east. <laughs> LA had a ring of 16 Nike bases. They were LA 04, 09, 14, 29, 32, 40, 43, 55, 57, 70, 73, 78, 88, 94, 96, and lastly 98. Yeah, you've been looking at another RTD bus. The reason why I know it's an RTD bus, if you look in the very right corner of that first window, it slides back and forth. And RTD stands for Rapid Transit District. That was before Metro came in. And our taxes paid for these buses. Hey, got refund? For much needed excitement, I'm going to walk away from this bus. Okay, I'm going to climb these stairs, get up to the top where I can turn around face south and show you the full platform. 
And when you see the pictures of the missiles, now they face north. That's the direction I am standing in. And where the missiles come out, they've dubbed them with the name of Underground Missile Storage. We're going to turn around. We're going to be heading west and passing all the items that we have already seen. We're going to go see what's at the entrance, which is the mess hall and the recreation room. Then the last stop on the way out will be the athletic court. Let's go check out this building. I don't have the best flashlight, but we'll get to see some of it. As I try to juggle a camera and a flashlight, here at this entrance is the mess room. Now, you're going to see the flashlight hit a door across the room. There it is. That is the rec room. And I know I didn't bring the greatest of flashlights, but hey, this is all I've got. Standing in the mess hall, those three doors there, the first one on the left is the bathroom, the next is the supply room, the next is the kitchen and dishwasher, and I'm only guessing. We're going to pan around the room here. Now this is the mess hall, and then we're looking at some of the walls here. This mess hall doesn't really look all that big, but if I remember right, they only had a little over a hundred men here at one time. We're in the mess hall facing west looking into the doorway of the recreation room. My guess this room is 35 by 70. Back in the day what would have been the most popular thing would have been ping pong. I'm sure they had checkers and chess because this room isn't that big for too many things. I really wish I could have brought a better flashlight, but I don't own one. We're coming out of the rec room and what well, wasn't that fun? There was a sink to the left and those three doors. Now, those three doors, the first one is the bathroom, the next is the supply, and the next is the kitchen and dishwasher area. And yes, I am just guessing based off of the floor plan. Of these three rooms, the first one from the left is a bathroom, and I'm basing that off of the piping that I saw going into the floor. So, it's just a guess. We're coming up on the second room, and it's pretty obvious this was a storage for food. Hey, I haven't been talking too much about directions. I should do that here. The rec room is on the west side, and the mess hall is on the east side. These three rooms are facing north because this is the only building that still has a rooftop and you can't see it from above ground. Hopefully that'll help you when you look at the diagrams. This third room off of the mess hall, I believe this to be the kitchen and dishwashing area. I'm gonna pretend that I know because those ducts there, I bet are the exhaust fans and they go out that wall. Coming up around to the right here would be the dishwashing area is my best guess. Okay, I think we spent more than enough time at the mass hall. And as we come upon this street, to the left would be the sentry, which would be the entrance or the exit, depending on how you look at it. Okay, that's going to do it for part two. Stay tuned for part three, where you're going to see the athletic field, the administration building, along with the barracks and the dog kennels, and much, much more. <laughs> that's all coming up in the next segment. And hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, give it a thumbs up, at least, even if you don't become a subscriber. And I'll see you in the next one.